Welcome. It's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I think I'm uh, kind of perfecting the art of uh, unscheduled videos uh, right here because uh, Chris Wilson, lead developer of Grinding Gear Games, 18 minutes ago, or about 20 minutes ago now from the recording of this, has released a, a kind of pseudo-manifesto on the Reddit. I'm not sure if it's on the, I think it's on the main website as well, but we're going to read it from Reddit here, talking about what they're working on in uh, the 3.15 uh, patches to come. Now there's been a lot of patches fixing mostly bugs with like Reaper and maybe buffing Reaper a little bit and trying to fix some of the T-posing. Um, but uh, they're really listening to the community here and in this kind of pseudo manifesto, what we're gonna talk about here, um, we can really see that. Now, regardless of uh, whether you think the changes are coming are good or bad, there's been a lot of uh, listening to the community here and a lot of the feedback coming through, right? So uh, first of all, um, they're talking about, Chris is talking about they've, uh, uh, they're touching on the expressed concern that fewer people are playing the expansion than the previous two. So the transparent number is 23% fewer plays joined us at launch compared to our all-time record. 23% fewer. And it's something that they were uh, um, prepared for. And in addition to the normal variance between releases, they do completely understand that Path of Exile had a lot of changes, and that's definitely unnerving to some players, right? Um, so there's been a bunch of patches, as I was saying, uh, hopefully trying to fix some of the T-posing. I think a lot of people are still uh, receiving T-posing uh, issues. A lot of uh, Reaper bugs and a lot of other bugs as well to a couple of exploits with PvP characters. An instant crash relating to instilling orbs, which is a little bit interesting. Uh, another instance crash. I think I experienced a couple of instance crashes. Um, and uh, then an earlier today one, and then there's some coming soon in terms of uh, bugs to chance to avoid being stunned, not displaying on flasks, uh, display for quantities of expedition currency, and some other bugs through here as well. Now, the really interesting stuff coming through here is uh, Chris talks about, uh, today they're gonna be talking about a, a discussing a variety of community feedback issues with either explanations or changes planned for a number of topics. Now, this is not a complete list, so movement skills are not addressed here uh, or anything like that. Uh, they're saying uh, this is still a set, this is the set that they're ready to talk about of the changes, right? So we're gonna go through one by one, right? First of all, can the merchant vendor window show you how many rune artifacts? Uh, basically, TLDR, yes, uh, this is coming through in a patch. Uh, they will be displaying what kind of uh, artifacts of the relevant type you have available for crafting. So this is gonna be really nice, but it may be a few days is what they're saying. They'll release it when it's ready, right? Uh, now, Expedition Vendor Refresh Currency is too rare. This is something that I've expressed to GGG as well and a couple of other people on stream, uh, that Rog, Tujin, and Danik's refresh currencies are pretty darn rare. Now, they've expressed here that Gwen Gwenon's was four times as high as the others, so that's kind of what it feels like. They feel it's in a good place and they'll probably have a value decided by tomorrow about increasing the others, which is pretty nice, right? They're also discussing increasing the stack sizes of vendor reroll currency items and all expedition currency in higher maps. This should make playing in hard maps more rewarding than trying to farm specific campaign areas. So that's pretty nice. A buff to high-end maps is gonna be pretty nice with the league mechanic there. All right, now this is the big kicker right here. Were the mana cost multiplier changes on support gems too extreme? Yes, they were too extreme, says GGG. They have uh, said, they definitely were. Based on the feedback and data, we're reviewing the mana cost multipliers again, and we'll be reducing many, but not all of them. Now, this is probably gonna be a small reduction. This is not gonna be back to what we normally had. This is going to be a reduction, but still an increase based on 3.14. Um, while this is still going to ease the impact, uh, while this will ease the impact on your mana by a moderate amount, the goal is still that mana matters a lot more than it did before. They're still hoping for that to be uh, the case. All right, now some more changes. Are there any changes coming to ailment and curse immunity? Ailment immunity granted by flask is being increased from one second to four seconds. Now this is a huge increase. Staunching flasks will also now make you immune to corrupted blood if they remove corrupted blood from you, which is something that I was a little bit concerned about. Um, it wasn't really making you immune to corrupted blood even if you remove the corrupted blood. Now, this is a, uh, a six-word sentence here, which is going to be pretty insane. Arctic armor will grant freeze immunity. That's pretty massive right there. I think that's pretty darn massive, and that's a big buff to Badger because Badger keeps getting frozen. Uh, I think my build will be able to fit in Arctic armor as well, which is pretty nice. All right, 
Aquamarine Flask is now being buffed from 40% to 60% freeze reduction. Very nice as well. And the map mods that curse players will no longer apply the curses with increased effect. Which basically means if you have 100% uh, reduced curse effectiveness, you are immune to all curses in maps, which is extremely strong. All right, moving on. I hate goat men. Tell me some good news. We're nerfing goat men, leap slams, and molten shells in the late game. Done. Uh, these were killing me a lot as well, so that's pretty nice to see. Uh, now, there's a big explanation about why Expedition has 20 types of currency. I'm not going to read word for word, but basically, GGG is um, sticking by their choice and justifying why there's so many different types. The main justification here is if they only had one type of currency, it would feel like gold. Um, like like a gold type of currency, and they've made a very old news post from 10 years ago describing the philosophy of why they wouldn't want gold in the game, a type of gold currency. Now, um, they also make the argument that uh, uh, 20 different currencies and the variety of currency types doesn't really cause additional inconvenience if you can stash them in the expedition locker each map. And uh, they haven't actually honestly touched on the inconvenience of having uh, different sizes of uh, the currency and having heaps of currency filling up your inventory. I disagree with this statement here. I, I really do think that it is a bit more of an inconvenience to add such a, a large amount of uh, um, just unwanted clogging of space in your inventory. Um, yeah, this is the only thing I don't really agree with in this manifesto here. Um, it seems a little bit uh, interesting for them to justify it. But go and read this whole section yourself and, and make a judgment for yourself because I'm not reading the whole thing right here. Uh, now, where is the mystery box? Uh, it's coming tomorrow, as they're saying. Tomorrow morning, morning, slightly late in the cycle because one of the family members had a family emergency, so bear with them for that. And a PSA about remnants work. Now, I'm going to be releasing a video later about uh, the in-depth mechanics of Expedition. But basically, the TLDR on remnants is that, that they are detonated in a sequence, and the effects apply to the monsters unearthed by that blast and all subsequent blasts. One of the things you need to consider strategically while planning to place explosives. That's basically it. Uh, there are many more topics that we are going through that our discussions haven't reached yet. In the interest of communication, this post represents where we're up to so far. We felt it was better to post this now rather than wait a few days until everything has been discussed. We'll let you know as we decide more stuff and other topics. Thanks for the ongoing feedback. So that's basically it. That's um, a pretty transparent in my opinion. Um, there's a lot they're working on. There's a lot that, you know, probably still could be addressed, um, but uh, yeah. That's how things are sitting. Let me know in the comments down below what you feel about this. I'll put the link to this as well. Definitely go read it for yourself because obviously I skimmed over it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. And until next time, Badger out.